a bunch of parts to get ready for the car show this weekend? And I got a hot deal, too. You think? Think again. Oh, man. Tired of back orders? You need NPD. With four strategically located superstores, orders are shipped direct to your door within one to three business days. National Parts Depot has quality restoration parts for Ford Truck, Mustang, Camaro, Chevelle, and Firebird. For your free catalog, visit NPD online or call toll free. Coming up next, we got a whole fender removal operation that's going to be real interesting, real easy to do. How to take a radio out of an old car, another easy thing that you're going to learn today. The auction, I've been keeping tabs on the auction, the results are absolutely amazing. We got a million dollar car that went through. I got this floor pan in this week, has the transmission hump in it and all, I'm going to show you how one of those things go in there, jack up an old car. Where the heck do you jack them up without like ruining some floor pan or some frame rail? You're going to learn how to do that too. I also want to thank my sponsors because without them, I couldn't be giving out all this free information. And if you appreciate it too, visit their websites. It's listed at the end of my show. Now let's get back to work. One of the things that makes these old cars, these Mustangs and hot rods and whatnot, such such joys to work on is they're simple cars. The front end of an old Mustang, it does not take a whole lot of tools. It does not take a whole lot of time to uh, disassemble. Uh, as far as the front end goes, all you got to do is uh, basically just get underneath the front of the car uh, with like a half-inch wrench or a half-inch socket um, and a 7 16th socket, and that will lower down the front balance panel. Uh, that's basically the panel that you want to remove first. You'll unplug the wiring or whatnot. Then inside the fender, just behind the bumper, uh, you're going to see the, the side uh, areas where the, the front valance gets lowered down and removed. Uh, so if you take that and set that out of the way, uh, then the next step you're going to have is, uh, is the disassembly of, say, the front bumper and the grill you're going to start loosening up a few bolts that are on the inside of the fender well that meet the uh, fender apron. There's two bolts just behind the headlamp assembly that you'll take off. Um, do that on both sides. And um, then from there, you're just going to move on to, uh, th there's only about, God, there's got only about, about uh, 15 bolts that hold on the fender of a Mustang. Um, but once you've done that, you got to take the front bumper off. There's a couple of end brackets. Uh, that surround the fenders on the front bumper and uh, then you're just going to have the four bolts that run down the middle of the bumper it's really a simple thing I mean cars back then were just made so simple and that's half the reason why I love working on these things uh, they're simple cars to, to work on and uh, who doesn't like doing that and then just carefully remove the bumper slide it out so this way you don't scratch your fenders uh, you know, just in case you're taking the fender off for another reason, you don't want to be uh, scratching your fender. In this case, we're taking the fenders off and removing the nose of this car to, um, uh, to, to replace the fenders. You know, I remember as a kid going to the circus. I had a lot of fun. Who as a kid doesn't have a lot of fun going to the circus with the elephants and the, and the ringleader and everything that goes along with that? Well, if you've ever gone to an automobile auction, especially a classic car automobile auction, you'll find that it's just like a circus there. I mean, there's so many, so much more of lights, there's different cars, there's people all over the place. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, this year's Barrett-Jackson auction is no exception to that. Uh, if you've been keeping an eye on it on TV and on the internet, you'll see there's been a lot of record breakers this year. You know, the economy has hit a lot of things over the last few years in the way of stocks and bonds and real estate and things like that. And of course it did hit the classic car market a little bit too. But us classic car guys, what we have is our classic car. That's what we own, that's what we possess, and that's what our value is in. Sure, we have a lot of fun driving them, and we have a lot of fun polishing them up, 
but in the end, we hope to have uh, uh, some gain on our on our uh, investment there and get some money back, if not all, and of course make money on it. Well, I tell you what, with some of the results I have here today, uh, that I've been keeping an eye on that Barrett Jackson option uh, this year, it's pretty impressive. Let me go down a few of these with you. There was a 65 white and blue Shelby, lot number 1263. This thing had 44,000 original miles on it. It was a barn find, uh, an original owner since 19, uh, 1965 to 2009. And um, it went for $385,000. Now, granted, that includes all the fees and everything that's, that goes along with, uh, with an auction, but $385,000. Um, the next one, lot number 1299, a 67 Fastback. Now, this is a red custom. Uh, it's got a, a go-between, an Eleanor, Gone in 60 Seconds kit on it, a little bit of Shelby stuff splashed in there. It's got a 428 engine in it. It was originally a C-Code 289 car with a supercharger. This thing went for $275,000. Now, the original cars are one thing, but these guys that are making these resto mods and doing top quality stuff are getting big bucks for them. Uh, a 1970 blue Boss 429, lot number 1250. That was a nut and bolt restoration. Now, I remember back in uh, 06, I bought a, brought a black Boss 429 to the Russo and Steel auction uh, out west. And that thing went for about $317,000. The market has gotten a little bit um, backwards on the Boss 429s. But even still, this thing went out the door for $47,500 for a Boss 429. Uh, lot number 719. This is an Eleanor replica. This is the Gone in 60 Seconds car. Everybody seems to love these things, me included. And that's the Pepper Gray. It was originally a C-Code 289 car that the guy put a 460 big block Ford engine in. Get this, $242,000. $242,000 this thing went for. Beautiful car though. I mean, these are top-notch cars with very, very little in the way of any flaws in them at all. And then there was a couple here that, um, that, I, that caught my eye. Uh, lot number 3041 is a 64 Fairlane Custom. Now these are really cool looking cars. It was originally a K-Code high performance engine car. And then what somebody did was they put a 427 five speed in it. Beautiful resto mod restoration on this thing. I mean this thing is beautiful. And it better have been because it went for one million dollars. This thing went for a million bucks. You gotta go on their website and check it out. Um, and then lastly what I noticed was a uh, brand new 2013 Shelby GT500, lot number 3043. This was Shelby's durability car. Uh, it was a 5.86 speed car made in, in collaboration with the SBT Ford uh, uh, team that, that makes these performance cars. So the Shelby team and the SBT team got together and put this car together. Uh, it was a charity uh, auction for this particular car. Get this, $300,000. Great for that charity. Who doesn't like charities? And I'm glad that went there. So if you ever get a chance, fly out there or fly someplace and go check out an auction because they are a lot of fun. So it just amazes me at the amount of parts that are being made for these old classic cars and these muscle cars. I mean, you can get everything for these things, it seems now. Uh, the market following is just so great, and that just makes it such a good thing for guys that want to do a nice job on their uh, classic car. And uh, in this case, uh, they make a full floor pan for an old Mustang now. Um, it's been a few years that they've started stamping them, but it's got the transmission tunnel on it. It's got the opening for the shifter. Um, it's got all the correct imprints in it, just, just like Ford made them. Um, and, uh, you know, it, we're kind of making it look a little easy the way this thing just slides up in here because we did have to cut out the old floor pan and all the frames out of it. But it is something that you could make that nice if your floor pan is that bad where it's rotted away uh, to the extent where the transmission tunnel is gone on it uh, and the lower firewall is gone and the spring boxes are gone and it's just a rusty old thing well you know they make all those parts for these things and it basically just slides up in there you kind of hook it into place and you're done hey the doc here from operation mustang i'm here to welcome the folks from kentucky mustang to the operation mustang family 
You know, the folks over at Kentucky, they've been in business since 1984. They have over 60,000 square feet of new and used parts for the 64 to 73 Mustang. They're always running specials for their shipping, so go to their website, KentuckyMustang.com, and if you call them, make sure you tell them the doc sent you. Now at this point what we're doing is we're removing the, uh, the grill, uh, the, the bumper filler panel, which is the white piece that's between the bumper and the grill. Uh, they're called upper stone deflectors or they're called bumper fillers. And um, it's attached just by maybe a half a dozen bolts. Uh, there's not a whole lot holding it on. And same thing here. You'll kind of just slowly pull it and get it out of the way. Because if you're taking it apart to access something, you, you want to get into the habit of taking it apart without scratching it. And again, in this case, we're taking it apart because we've got to replace it. But it's a good uh, habit to get into to take something apart as if you're going to uh, reuse it again. Uh, you'll pull out the headlights, and then behind the headlight, you'll have a couple of plugs there that you'll unplug, and that'll unplug the uh, the park light that's uh, in the front. And that's how how you'll unplug that, uh, and then you'll kind of just gently push the wires through to the back of the headlamp assembly um, to get them out of the way. Um, and don't worry about uh, you know getting those getting snipped or or cut. Uh, you know there, there's plenty of room for those to clear. Just be real careful of what you're doing, like everything else here. And at this point, uh, we're basically going to just start removing the the grill of the car. Um, there's a series of bolts below the the grill, um, and um, uh, that surround the opening itself. Um, and there's a couple at the top that he's that he's taken off right now. Um, and then you'll really just slide the thing up. Um, it's 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 actually in there so easy. The fog light ones, the cars that have fog lights, a little bit tougher to, to get out. Um, but for the most part, it's just unplugging a few extra wires to get those out too. And they do have a couple of extra brackets. So be careful and watch yourself. But once you get those top bolts out and those uh, those rear inner side bolts out, um, it, it's basically just a piece of cake to, to just slide it up. You'll work it up nice and easy because um, it does slide out of there and again if you're looking to do this without scratching the car well take your time because it can be done and um, it just slides up and then next next thing you're gonna do is start taking out the support now that's the latch support right there um, which not only holds the latch it supports the grill it supports the grill support that holds up the grill um, and it actually gives the uh, the radiator support uh, a lot of strength too because it ties the bottom of the radiator support together with the top of the radiator support. Um, and now what you'll end up doing pulling out the two moldings. Uh, there's just a Phillips screw on each side and a couple of clips that just kind of hold them at the bottom and they'll, so they'll snap out of there and you can just place those out of the way. Um, and now uh, at this point here there's just a bolt on each side to slide that uh, grill support out. See, these cars come across, uh, come apart so simple. That, that is, you know, a simple socket set at home in your garage, and you could have the whole front end of your Mustang apart. Um, you got a couple of Phillips screws that surround the, the headlight door itself, um, and then there's four bolts that actually hold the headlamp extension in, and that's what he just removed there. Take those off, place those to the side, and now you're really just uh, just down to removing the fenders themselves, uh, which is going to be a matter of taking off the top bolts. There's a few bolts on the inside. Um, you got uh, the ones that are behind the park light there, and uh, ones that are just above the park light, behind the headlamp assembly. You use a half inch socket on those. Take your time. You're not in any big hurry. I get a lot of people that ask me, how do I jack up an old car or an old Mustang? You know, old cars, they're fun to work on, but you've got to really be careful on where you jack them up, man. You don't want to put the jack underneath the wrong spot because you're liable to put that jack right through a floor pan. I mean, it is an old car, and they are unibodies. So today I'm going to cover where you can put that jack so you don't screw your car up. Check it out. What you got underneath the front of a Mustang, just behind the lip of this oil pan here, is a cross member that's bolted to the thing. This thing is pretty rigid, actually. It's, it's an unboltable thing, so you can get access to your oil pan. 
But if it's bolted in properly and it's where, the, where it should be, you can support the whole car with it. It's actually a pretty good deal. Um, so anyway, slide the jack underneath the pan, put it right on this round bar right here, and just jack it up nice and slowly till the two front wheels are off the ground, and then you'll be able to set a couple of jack stands under it. That's where the front of it goes. Let's check out the back. On the rear of an old car, especially these old Mustangs and Camaros and Challengers and all those, they had what's called a live axle. This is a straight axle kind of thing here. It's, there's nothing independent about it. Um, but it's got this big round center section on it here where all the gears are packed in there. And uh, that's where you're going to want to rest your, your jack. So you'll slide the jack underneath here. You'll let the jack kind of come up and the pad will rest against here. And you'll slowly jack it up. Put it up enough where you get yourself up in the air, and then again, as soon as you can, you put jack stands underneath it, because it is something that you don't want to crawl underneath, and uh, get yourself hung up under it. Last thing you want to do is work on your Mustang or your hot rod, and you're, you're stuck underneath it. You're calling, honey, get me out from underneath here. All kidding aside, you could really get hurt. So make sure you use some jack stands underneath an old car. These are just unibodies meaning there is not one thing on an old Mustang or an old Camaro or anything that's very strong. But you weld all those things together and you bolt them together, that's where you get your strength. That's how a unibody works. So check it out, make sure you're careful, and get those jack stands. In the front, where you're going to want to put the jack stands, just in front of the lower control arm, there's a box frame. That's the perfect spot to support an old Mustang, right there. One on each side of the car, put a jack stand there, nice and safe, you can lower the jack down. The back of the car, this live axle we were just talking about, has axle tubes coming off of the center section right here. And the perfect spot to put your jack stand is right under the live axle tube, right there. You can lower the jack down, you can get the jack out from underneath it, and you can crawl underneath there and feel good about it. So remember, play it safe, do things the right way, because you're not playing around with a toy. A car is your real deal. Hi, the doc here from Mustang Restorations. You know, they say it doesn't rain out there in California, but it's been raining Mustang parts over a California Mustang since 1976. They got the stock and performance parts anybody's going to need for the 65 to 73 Mustang, the Fox Body Mustang, and of course all the late model stuff that's available. So give them a call or go on their website, calmustang.com, and you'll see what they're all about. Nice people to deal with. If you do, make sure you tell them that the doc sent you. I'm out on a test drive on this uh, 64 and a half Mustang, and it's got a few issues. Um, number one, as you can see by the steering wheel, I'm going straight, yet the steering wheel looks like it's making a left turn, so there's something going on there with the front end alignment. Uh, it's got some rattles and squeaks in the back end I can hear of it. It actually travels down the road pretty straight though, it's not too bad. A few wind leaks, not a bad old horse at all. This is, this is a pretty good car, I think we should be able to straighten out whatever we got here. Come on over here, let me show you where something is called a public VIN is located. If you lift up the hood on an early Mustang, there's going to be a relief in the driver's side fender that exposes this number. The first digit here is a 5 in this car, meaning it's a 65. If it was a 6, it would be a 66, 7 meaning 67, and so on. Fairly simple there. Uh, R, that's the plant designation. They were pumping these things out pretty heavy back in the uh, 60s, and they had three different plants making them uh, out in California, uh, Michigan, and over in Jersey. And uh, the R meaning uh, one of the plants there. 09, third and fourth digit, that's the body style. In this case, that would mean it's a fastback. Fifth digit, real important one, that's the engine code. You must look at that one. In this case, it's a T, meaning this thing was a six cylinder car. And these last digits here, that's the consecutive number, uh, meaning that it was the 155,000th, 187th car on the assembly line. The next one will be 188, then 189. And believe it or not, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a Mustang either before or after. It could be a Falcon, it could have been a Fairlane. They were building all sorts of cars on the same assembly line within the same range of what type of car they were. Um, the next numbers I'm going to show you and their location is the confidential bit. 
And the confidential bin is put in an area where you would have to remove the fender or pull the fender back to expose this thing. They did that so the law enforcement would have an area they could go to find these numbers just in case there was something going on with the public thing. So they could identify it in case there was any kind of like shenanigans going on. And there was a lot of that going on back in the 60s and the 70s, let me tell you. I've seen a lot of things go on. But anyways, that thing is located over here. Come on, let me show you. Again, if you unbolt the passenger fender or unbolt it enough to pull it back, it'll expose this confidential VIN. And it should be the same number that's on the public side. If it's not, you got some big problems. Uh, same thing though, you got a five on this car, meaning it was a 65. You got your plant, your body style. A, that's a pretty good thing. That means this car was a 289 four bro car. 225 horsepower, very good thing. And then your consecutive serial numbers. Um, so point being is if you're gonna buy or you're gonna sell your Mustang, it's a good idea to check these numbers. A lot of you guys out there that are into me know that I'm into um, movie cars. I actually own quite a few of them. This one over here is one of the ones from the original Starsky and Hutch movie that was made in 2004. Luckily, it wasn't the jump one that went into uh, the water. Uh, so this, this car was a survivor. Uh, this car over here is one of the taxi stunt cars from the movie Taxi with Queen Latifah and Jimmy Fallon. This is a really fun car to drive. Let me tell you what, it's like driving a, a giant Hot Wheel. Uh, this one over here, this is one of the GTOs from the movie Triple X State of the Union. It's got like a chameleon style paint job on it, which really makes it neat to drive around. It's got 22 inch wheels on it. it. It is such a cool thing. I tell you what, I can go into any neighborhood I want with this car and I am Mr. Cool with this thing. It is so cool. This car over here, I just got in about six months to eight months ago. This is one of the Grand Nationals from the Fast and Furious 4 movie that uh, Vin Diesel drove. Um, and this was a stunt car, so it's got all sorts of stunt features on it uh, as far as braking and steering, and it's another neat car to drive around. But uh, since we're into movie cars, and a lot of my customers uh, know that I'm into that, I have a customer in particular that had us make us up a replica of the bullet car. There was a movie called Bullet, uh, a detective, and he drove around a Mustang in this movie. And a lot of, a lot of you guys out there that are into uh, to, uh, stunt cars and movies, you know all about this car. It's about one of the most popular stunt Mustangs there has ever been put on film. This is the car right here. We um, painstakingly tried to replicate everything we could from the movie. The customer supplied us with different pictures of different unique things this car has and I think we did a good job replicating it. Of course, the wheels, everybody recognizes the wheels that were used on the car. The moldings are painted the color of the car, which is correct for the bullet car. Uh, the side molding over here is painted the correct color of the car, which is the way they were. Um, he supplied us with all these unique pictures that show the different things that, are, uh, that were different on this car from any other Mustang. Steve McQueen blacked out all the, the Mustang names or took names and horses off the car. You know, although everybody could tell it was a Mustang, you couldn't read what it was. Uh, these cars had no reverse lights, so we had to take the backup lights off, which we'll show you that. And um, the back end of the car was blacked out too. Come on back here. We started out with an original 390 GT car. This is an original 390 car, uh, just like the bullet ones and it's a 68, so it's correct for each year. You can see the back end of the car has the, the, uh, the blacked out treatment on the tail light panel and the upper uh, trunk lid panel. Blacked out gas cap, no reverse lights, and the, um, the tailpipes are sticking out just the way they should, and they're blacked out too. We even got a set of California plates on there just to really make it uh, authentic. Uh, if we walk around the car, the steering wheel that was used in this thing, just like in the movie, is a special steering wheel uh, that uh, has a, a Shelby center cap on it. That's a couple thousand dollar steering wheel right there. That was difficult to come by, but uh, uh, we did what we could and we came up with it. It's got the original GT uh, 8000 RPM dash in it. And um, let me show you the motor compartment in this thing. Correct green color, dark metallic green. 
and uh, it's got its factory 390 engine in it. Power steering, power brakes. Like I say, it's an original S-code car, which means it was a 390 car. And uh, it's really, really a unique thing. No, no uh, ornamentation in the grill, just like the movie car. And um, it really, uh, really going to get some looks as he goes down the road in this thing. We're really proud of this thing. Yeah, now we're getting down to actually removing the fender of the car. Uh, that didn't take long. I mean, there was a few pieces to remove on the front, but for the most part, it's pretty easy. At the heel of the fender, towards the back, there's going to be a, a bolt back there that you're going to want to take off that goes into the rocker. Um, you just got one there. Then on the inside of the car, uh, you'll remove the uh, scuff plate and the kick panel, and there'll be a hole behind there. So you can access the uh, same thing. There's a nut back there that, um, that you can put a half-inch socket on, basically, uh, because the stud comes through the, uh, the side firewall there and, uh, and actually braces the fender uh, to the side of the car. So it's actually a good one to have on there. Make sure you reuse it. And then you'll come and you'll just unbolt the, the top of the fender. Got about uh, half a dozen bolts there that, that hold the top of the fender in. Take your time because uh, those clips can end up being somewhat rusty. Uh, and they'll twist. So use some WD-40 or use some sort of a, um, a solvent on there. So this way the bolts kind of just more or less come right out of there. Um, and then once you get all those bolts out at the top, um, you're going to want to make sure your antenna is loose and then just gently pull the fender away from the car. Pull it away from the door. Uh, again, in the interest of maybe pulling the fender off without uh, scratching the rest of the car, because maybe you're just replacing the fender or you just got to get back there, you don't want to scratch the rest of your car. So uh, same thing here. On the driver's side, uh, you'll get to the inside bolt, you'll get to the lower heel bolt, uh, you'll unbolt the, the, the top of the fender where the uh, apron is, and that's where your VIN number is over there on that side. Good, to, good uh, chance to check your VIN numbers at this point once you get those fenders off of there. Take a look. And then just gently pull the fender away from the car. Got an email from Paul out in St. Louis. He's got a 65 coupe they just picked up, real nice car, original car. He's looking to pull the radio out of it. He doesn't want to cut anything up or do anything wrong. So I thought I'd outline a, a process on how to take that radio out for him. And stay tuned because this is what it's all about. The doc's here today to tell you how to take a radio out of old Mustang. I tell you what, I've taken quite a few radios out of old Mustangs in my day. When I was a teenager, the first thing I did was take that old AM radio out of there. I'd put an 8 track player in there, a cassette player in there, throw a few speakers in the back. I was having a good old time. But to take one out of these old 65, 66 cars, piece of cake. First thing you want to do, disconnect the battery. Whenever you're working on a car and you got to do electrical, disconnect the battery of the automobile. It's the safest way of going about it. Next, just take the radio knobs off. Take a look. You'll pull the center knobs out. You'll pull the outer knobs out. You'll get a 9 16 deep socket to take the nuts off that are behind those knobs. And then just take the two lock washers and set those to the side, because you might end up needing those for the other radio that you're going to put in there. Now get yourself behind the radio and get a 7 16 wrench on the nut that holds the bracket on the back of the radio. Remove the nut, and then over to the side of the radio, you'll see a wire that's for your antenna. Just gently kind of pull on that, tug on that a little bit, and it'll come right out. And over on the other side of the radio, what you'll have is three wires. One wire goes for your power for your ignition. The other wire goes the power for the light of the radio. And then the other two wires are for your speaker. Disconnect all those wires. Then come on back around front. And what you'll do is you'll hold the front of the radio, kind of push the radio to the back. And there'll be a few things behind you that you're going to have to avoid and get yourself out of the way. Just be careful what you're doing. But for the most part, it'll fall right out and come right out. Look at that. Nothing like an old radio, man. Look at this. this is a nice original car. Now that's the stud that was on the back of the radio where the 7 16 wrench nut was. And then these are the wires that you disconnected. So that's how easy it is to take the radio out of a 65-66 Mustang. <clears throat>
So keep an eye on the rest of my how-to videos and the rest of my show. And uh, this doctor is going to find another operating room to go to from here. Coming April 17th, the unexpected, the new Ford Mustang. Brilliant new kind of car. A new generation of Fords for the new breed of Americans who want stick shift action and room for four. Who collect sports car badges and trading stamps. Who want the elegance of a European touring car and till now have to settle for basic transportation. This is for them. This is Mustang. With an unexpected variety of options, Mustang is the one car that's designed to be designed by you. Get ready to meet the unexpected April 17th at your Ford dealers. Mustang is only days away. Hi, the doc here from Mustang Restorations. You know, in over 30 years of restoring these old classics, I've dealt with a lot of companies. And Dallas Mustang has been with me since the 1980s. If you go to their website, DallasMustang.com, you'll see parts for the 64 to 73 car, the Fox body car, and of course all that late model stuff that's out there. And for you guys that have a late model Chevy or Dodge sitting next to your pony in the garage, they got stuff for that too. Their phone number, 1-800-MUSTANG. How cool is that? And if you give them a call, make sure you tell them that the doc sent you. Well, thanks for watching my show. For more of my exclusive free how-to videos, go to ClassicMustangTelevision.com. And remember, this doctor, the doctor of restorations, I'm always in.